So on Fun Sock Friday, okay, um, we're not going to pay attention now, Taylor defiled my board. But on Fun Sock Friday, you guys will be able to add and subtract polynomial section 6.5, okay? As you can see in our notes, is this a very long section? No, no. No, it really isn't, okay? So, we have three steps we're going to follow to add and subtract polynomials, okay? Okay. We are going to, we are going to group the like terms together. Well. We're going to add the coefficients. Coefficients are the numbers of the like terms, the numbers that are in front of them. And we're going to write all the terms in order of the degree of the x value from greatest least, a.k.a. standard form. The same, the same thing we just got done practicing, right? Okay. And where we're descending, but we're alphabetical. All right. So we're going to use these steps, and we're going to find each sum or difference. So notice, I if I covered up the second half of this, 4a squared plus 7a minus 12, that just looks like a normal polynomial. In this case, a trinomial has three terms in standard form. If I cover up the first part, the second parenthesis, looks, again, like a normal trinomial. But what are we doing with these two trinomials? We're adding them, okay? It says we're adding them. So we're going to add these together. So we're going to do the same thing we just got done doing, actually, where we're going to underline what we um, what would go first, second, third, fourth, so on and so forth, okay? So what am I going to put one underline underneath? Mom. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. <laughs> I'm not going to put an underline underneath Karen Castle, okay? I didn't mean to say that. Like, as soon as I said it, I was like, oh. So what am I putting one underline underneath? What comes first here? Clearly not A. 7A. Mm, 7A won't come first. We do descending order. Okay. What? Negative 9A squared. <laughs> Is there anything else that also comes first? 4A squared as well. We're going to do the entire thing. Okay? Because what we're doing is we're adding this polynomial with this polynomial. And then 2A. So 2A would have 2 underneath it. 7A, 2A. And 7A as well would have 2 under it. And then the letter. It's actually going to be 3 under 12, negative 12. Because it's the same as negative 6. All right, guys. Let's get our side conversations done for now. I'm going to write you like a formal apology. So, now we're going to add these together. So, when we add these two polynomials, we're going to add the like terms. So, 4a squared and negative 9a squared. Are those like terms? Yeah, that's why we put one underline underneath both. How do we know they're like terms, guys? They both have an a squared. Same variable, same power, a squared. Very good. So what is 4a squared plus a negative 9a squared? 5a squared. Okay, what kind of 5a squared? Negative. The negative kind, because the negative 9 is bigger. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's negative 5a squared. Okay, right, write this down. Maybe I won't follow my chair. Yikes, okay. Write it down, write it down. Okay, what? So next, I'm going to do the two underlines. 7a and positive 2a. What do those add to be? Not quite. 9A. Because we're adding these, right? Okay. So what's going to come last? Negative 12. Wait, what are we, what are we negative 12 plus a negative 6. What's negative 12 plus negative 6? Negative 18. We had negative 12 in the first parenthesis, negative 6 in the next parenthesis. So now, is this already in standard form? Yeah, because of the way we did our problem, this is already in standard form, okay? So we actually, sometimes people would do it where they just say negative 5a squared, and they're going to do the negative 12 and the negative 6 first, but then they're not in standard form. It is Backstreet Boys. Um, so this keeps it in standard form already. This is Backstreet Boys. Oh, yeah. we should play a musical knowledge game. Like Guess This Band or Name That Tune. All right. Any questions on number one? Is this very different from what we were doing? No. Not really. It really isn't. Wait, what is the difference? Okay. The difference is going to come right here in number two, where what, are, what operation are we doing between these parentheses now? We're subtracting, okay? So that's going to change it a little bit. 
So there's a couple of different ways we can think about it, but before we do that, let's go through an underline. So what's going to come first out of everything? We have a 6a squared, a negative 8a, a 12b to the third, an 11a squared, and a 6b to the third. 12a squared? 12b to the third? Okay, here's a, here comes a good question. What's going to come first, a squared or b to the thirds? Oh, a. No. A, because alphabetical. So even though b to the third has a higher power, higher exponent, we go alphabetical first. So 6a squared and 11a squared come first. Then what comes next? Negative 8a. Negative 8a, because it still has the a. And then what comes last? The last two. The last two, the 12b to the third and the 6b to the third. Now, here's the thing. We're doing all of the first minus all of the second. So when we do this, it's like 6a squared minus 11a squared. So what's 6a squared minus 11a squared? It's negative 5a squared. Very good. Now, when we have negative 8a, is there anything to subtract negative 8a by in the second parenthesis? No. No, so we just leave it as negative 8a. It's like you're adding or subtracting 0. And then the last one, 12b to the third minus 6b to the third. Make sure we're still minusing there. Minus 6b to the third, okay? Now, could you guys see this where we might forget that we're subtracting by the time we get to our second or third thing? Do you guys think that might be possible? What? It shouldn't be. You're right. It shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be a 6 to the third anyway. Sorry. No, it should be, it should be positive 6 to the third. Thank you, Olivia. It should be a positive 6 to the third. Because 12 to the third minus 6 to the third. Now, do we think it's possible at all, guys, that we might, as we go through this, remember that, oh, it's minus the first time, but by the time we get to the last few, is it possible we forget that it's subtracting? Mm -hmm. I forget a lot of things. Okay. And we forget a lot of things very easily sometimes, okay? So what, here's what I do. I always do this when I'm subtracting polynomials, okay? When I'm doing this type of problem, yeah. I do this every time, even still. I change this to a positive. And so what do I have to do when I change something, subtraction to addition? You change the sign. Change the sign after it. Now, in this case, Keep I have to change everything in the parentheses. So a positive 11a becomes a negative 11a. And a positive 6b to the third becomes a negative 6b to the third. And if we walk through this now, 6a squared plus a negative 11a squared is still negative 5a squared. 12b to the third plus a negative 6b to the third is still a 6b to the third. And so this is still our answer. So whenever I have this subtraction, I always turn it into addition. And then you have to change every sign in that following parenthesis, though. Questions on that? Okay, let's look at number three. 5x squared y plus 3xy squared minus 5x plus 2x squared y minus 5xy plus 7x. Okay, so we have a couple different variables again this time. We have x and y. So what's going to come first out of all of this thing? X's are going to come before y's. Sorry, what was that? Something to do with x. X comes before y in the alphabet. Okay, so negative 5x, but is there a higher power of x we see than just x to the first? The one with the y? The one with the y, like this one? Oh. What's the highest power of x we see? I thought it was just the 5x squared, squared y. 5x squared y? Is there another thing we see with that same power of x? Yeah. That's a like term? 2x squared, squared y. So those both come first, because we say, okay, we're focusing on x like Mason said. And then from there, we say, what's the highest power of x we have? Okay. Questions on why that comes first? Okay. So now we're still focusing on x, but do we notice we have a tie with x to the first, x to the first, x to the first, and x to the first? Do we notice that? Okay. So we talked about it last class. Does anyone remember what breaks the tie? Okay. Okay, well, we do want it to be alphabetical, but they're all x's. We actually go to the second variable. We say, okay, what has the highest power on the second variable? So they're all even with the x's. Which one of them has the highest power for y? The 3xy squared. So we're going to have that go second. And then negative 5xy. And then negative 5xy, because that has the next highest power of y. Very good, Olivia. So when we have a tie with the x's, when we have a tie with the first variable, okay, when we have a tie with the first variable, 
we're going to go to the second variable and say, okay, what has the highest power there? So now the ties over, do negative 5x and 7x, are those like terms? Yeah, those are. The same variables, the same power. Those are both going to have four underlines. Do you have any questions as to why we ordered it the way we did? Okay, well, now we just need to add and actually write these in order. So the one underline, we notice, we cut, excuse me, first of all, the reason we underline things, two reasons. Do we know we have everything covered now? Yes. Yeah, we took care, we know we have at least everything accounted for. So now we actually say, okay, well, first, we have both the one underlines. So what's five plus two? Seven. So we have seven x squared y. The exponents and variables stay the same. What's going to come next? We said it's going to be 3xy squared, right? So now, because we are on our third thing to write, we're on our third underline. So what comes next? Negative 5xy. That negative stays with it. All right, and then what's coming last? Plus 2x. The negative 5x plus 7x, which is plus 2x. So now we're at the end, and we just want to double check real quick. Is there anything that we can still combine, or are these all different? They're all different? Okay, we're done then. As long as we're in standard order, which we are, we're done. Because once again, the standard order here is going to be x has come before y's. So you say highest power of x comes first, so x squared. Then you say, okay, well, now we have a three-way tie for the x's. So we look to the y's and say, okay, well, this has the highest power of y, next highest power of y, and then no y. Questions on that? So when you have a tie, we just go to the next variable. All right. On four, what, sign, what, what operation are we doing? Subtraction. What did I just say a moment ago on number two? I always do, even still, as a math teacher, when I'm subtracting these. Change, change the entire second, the entire second principle, right? I change this to, it's the same idea, though. Keep and change, okay? So we're going to change this to addition. And so 5m squared n squared becomes what? Negative. Negative, Negative 3mn becomes positive. positive. And 17 becomes Negative. Now, I don't have to worry about subtracting anymore. I can just deal with whatever signs are next to it. I don't have to keep track of this minus sign in the middle anymore. Okay, that makes my life easier. It makes it have a less, less of a chance of me making a mistake later. And I don't know about you guys, I like minimizing the number of mistakes I'm going to make. So, out of everything here, what's going to come first? Raise your hand if you can help me um, on what's going to come first here. Just as I'm going to put you on the spot here. What are you thinking? Eleven m squared n squared. I agree with you. Okay, alphabetically, m comes before n, and so we go with the highest power there. Now, is there something else that's tied with that? Yeah, that negative five m squared n squared. It's a it's a like term, so they're both going to come first. Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> um, what's going to come second? What's going to have two underlines underneath it? 2MN and 3MN? Yeah, 2MN and 3MN. And then what's going to come last? We have, a, we have a tie for that as well. Negative 11 and negative 17. Negative 11 and negative 17 because we made that negative. Very good, Rochelle. Okay. Now, McKinsey, for our M squared N squared, we have 11 and a negative 5. What's that become? So for our, our one underlines, m squared, n squared, we have an 11 and we have a negative 5. So what's 11 plus negative 5? Oh, I think you added them. I think you did 11 plus 5, but it's a negative 5. 6, very good. So we have 6 m squared n squared are you writing these down yeah, right thank you for writing these okay and then what's going to come next 
Yep. Plus 5 mn. The two underlines, positive 2 and a positive 3, okay? Plus 28. Close. It is a 28, but is it positive or negative? Negative. It's negative. So you can do pl plus a negative 28, or you could do minus 28. There's no difference between the two, okay? Whether you're saying plus a negative 28 or minus 28, either way, the 28 is negative, okay? And this is in standard form. As we look at number five, we notice we have subtraction again, right? So what are we doing here with this subtraction? All right, so what, what do we have to change the subtraction to, sorry? I asked what she said. Oh, sorry, what do we have to do with the subtraction symbol? Oh, we have to change the entire side. Yeah, we have to change it to subtraction, then we change the entire side. So, bless you, must ring down after, let's forget. So, 2a squared b becomes? Negative. Negative, negative 5b squared becomes? Positive. Positive, and 4a squared becomes? Negative. Negative. So now we go through and we say, okay, well, we have to underline our things. Let's go ahead and go first, second, third, fourth, so on and so forth, okay? So of all of this, what do we think is coming first? 2a squared? 2a squared b is going to come first. Very good. That negative 2a squared b is coming first. We have to go alphabetical, so we know it's going to be based upon our a's. And we say the highest a we see is a squared. We have a 3a squared, a 2a squared b. She was literally in the library. Then I just was like, she was checking out a book and she told me to go to class. So. Hmm. A negative 4a squared. But this 2a squared b comes before the others because it has the b and the other ones don't. So what's going to come next? It's going to have two underlines. Mm, mm, not quite. So 5ab squared, 3a squared, 3a squared, because a squared comes before the normal a on the 5ab squared. Now, is there something that's tied with 3a, 3a squared? 4a squared. Yeah, that negative 4a squared is tied. So now, Olivia, would come the one you said with the 5ab squared. Is that what you said? Yep. Okay. So the 5ab squared is going to have three underlines. Because now that's the only one with an A to the first. Do we have any more A's left? Okay, now we're on to our B's. So what do we notice about 4B squared and 5B squared? They're the same. They're the same. They're tied. They come up four underlines each. So now we say, okay, how many things have one underline? Just one. So it's going to be a negative 2a squared b to start. And 3a squared? Yep. 3a squared. Well, what else has two underlines, though? 4a squared. The negative 4a squared. So what's 3a squared plus negative 4a squared? Oh, 1a squared? Okay, what kind of 1a squared? Negative. Negative because the 4 is bigger than the 3, so we keep the negative. All right, Grayson, what's coming third? Five AB squared, very good. It's the one with the three underlines. Now, Allie, what thing or things are coming forth? Okay, 4b squared, that's 4 in lines, what else? And 5b squared. And 5b squared, now they're both positive and we combine them, what's 4 plus 5? 9. Okay, so now we're in standard form, like we should be, and everything's added, or in this case we really subtracted. Questions on that? Exhausted? Deep breath there. I want you guys to try number six on your own. If you have it or have questions, raise your hand. 
All right, so on this one, we have to change the subtraction to addition again, so we change all the signs following that to the opposite of whatever they were. So positive becomes negative, negative becomes positive, okay? From there, we go through underlining. So we say, well, x and y, x comes first, and so we say x squared are gonna come first. And this time we actually have three of them. We're not gonna let that throw off what we do, even though we have three different things we're underlining. Then we say, okay, well, now we're faced with a tie between x, y, x and x y and x y's are the same so we say between x and x y what comes first well it all really comes down to do we put the one with the second variable first or do we want to put the one with only one variable first um let's look back at an example like we did on um number three here and on number five where we had a squared b and a squared on five and on three we had the x y and x um, on both of those, we put the one with the second variable first. We're going to continue to do that. So 4xy and negative 3xy would have two underlines. And then negative 4x comes in third. So then we start combining like terms and ordering everything around. So we have one underline for the first thing. We have 3, negative 2, and positive 4. All those x squareds. So 3 and negative 2 will give us 1. And 1 plus 4 will give us 5x squared. And we say, okay, well, now we're on to our second thing. So two underlines, 4xy plus a negative 3xy. 4 minus 3 gives us a positive 1xy. And you can just write xy if you want or 1xy. Either one would be okay. And then last but not least comes our third thing. So we have our third underline, that negative 4x. And if you really want to write a plus negative 4x, that's okay. Or you can just put minus 4x. And that is the end of the problem. Okay, for a homework, like I told everyone, um, in case you did, forgot, don't do number 10. You can cross it out.